So what sort of and life advice has family imparted on you? Life advice. Um, like what, what do they want me to like do when they like, what sort of life advice does family give women today? You know, the question's for both of you, you know, when it comes to choices that you're making. Um, so life advice, I'll think about like my grandmother, my grand, my grandmother was, um, always telling me that I should, I should get like a good career and I should, I should go with that. But she's also told me like her and my, and my, um, late grandfather, they had a beautiful marriage and they very much had like the gender roles in there. And I got to witness that. And she's from a very young age told me like, you are going to be beautiful and you're going to be sweet and you're going to be pleasant and your marriage will, will, will flourish. But she's also told me that like, I should get um, a good career. She's never been too particular about what that is, but um, she's also just said to, she's given me dating advice she all she'll, every time I see her, she'll be like, she's very Catholic. And she'll be like, I'm mm. praying that God sends you a good man. I'm praying that God sends you a good man. Cause I, I mean, I'm 24. I have a biological time clock. I mean, I'm well aware, mm. but I'm just, I'm, I think that I, in this time, like, I know I should be looking. I just don't really know how to be going about that. I don't really like to, I guess, just put myself in the in situations i just don't know where to start really but is hope a terrible plan like you're just gonna go up is is hope a, a terrible plan yeah like is it just gonna just show up one day um i don't i don't think so no so what's the plan i don't know i really i i, I don't know because the only way i could think of is I mean, ideally, me and the women in my Bible study, we've always said that we wanted to meet a man at church. That's so ideal for us. But mm -hmm. um, are there no I men that go to church that are single and in the age range that you would want to date? And attract they are all of the, let's put it this way. All the cute ones are married already. Like okay. all the all of the, the cute ones, they, a, a lot of men are already already married, at least in my church. But, when you say cute, do you like? Is that from the optics of attraction, like a, a handsome sort of cute or handsome? Or, yeah, or, that's what I mean by that. Or does cute, like for women, involve uh, success, pedigree, influence, captivation? Um, I think well, that that matters, obviously. But whenever I see a, uh, an attractive man in church, I don't know those things yet. Mm. If I Okay, let's say if I if I see an attractive man in church and he's single and I um, go about getting to know him and he is it he doesn't make a lot of money or he doesn't he's not very ambitious. Oh, he doesn't make enough to lead a family in a way, at least mm. um, then I would have to take a step back and look at things because that, that does matter. I'm not going to sit here and say that it doesn't. So the cute ones are married. The ones that are unmarried are dorks or where do um the, i don't they're not marriage material they're not husbands right and, and I, I i can't i don't even want to say that because it's not like i'm like speaking to them i don't i don't know anything about them does anybody speak to this met speak to these men and say hey look if you want to attract a rachel <clears throat> who's of the same faith and in the same congregation sort of thing this is what you need to become. Like these are the cute guys that are married. This is what you need to do to accomplish this. Does anybody speak to these men? That's interesting because um, in my church, there's a lot of small groups and they have mm. small groups, um, a lot of them tailored for just men. And then they have different ideas for like different like main premises that they go off of. Like they have a business mm. one, they have one for working out and they have some for like activities. And mm. I'm curious, um, as if that's something that they talk about as a, as if like for the single men, as far as finding a woman along so they have groups for working out for hobbies, like what sort of, hobbies? yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know much details about it. One of my okay. coworkers actually, um, who got me into my church, he's a guy and mm -hmm. he was in the small groups, but he was in the business one. 
but he did tell okay. me that they had other ones for other hobbies. I just didn't know which ones. The business group, is it like BNI sort of like networking? Hey, I've got a dental hygienist sort of practice and I do this and electricians and I'm a plumber and they sort of network right. that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a networking thing, but it's a, it's a, is there thing. any emphasis put on scaling up and making like impact and serious bank or I, I think swapping so. business cards? I think so. I think <clears> so. <throat> okay. Seems like there's a big I've seen in my experience, like I've, I don't, I'm not a part of the church anymore. <laughs> Um, I went when I was growing up just a bit. And I think one of the things is common and what's interesting in, in, in Rachel, like you, I remember you coming on the show and I think the, the sole reason we got connected in the first place, because you said you were a follower, like, or you had dated somebody who was a follower and then you of, of richest stuff and the content. And then you sort of started watching and you agree with a lot of stuff that we talk about. But what I've seen, I think increasingly across church goers and church members even, but even when I was in the church and when I was growing up in my teens and early twenties, the kinds of things that we talk about and the kinds of things that I've learned through rich and through reading books and through even, you know, navigating the world through an unplugged lens are very dissimilar, almost at odds with a lot of the teachings and the things that I saw and that I see men that are in the church continue to learn. I mean, I've even got a member in my community who's writing a book about sort of the relation, the at odds relationship between modern Christianity, which seems to be pacifying and pussifying men and sort of unplugging slash the red pill, these sorts of things. So I'm curious and it's, it's interesting to me. I wonder if what you're looking for is becoming a ever shrinking sort of dying breed of a man that embodies sort of these traditional masculine leadership traits, who's also a Christian, when those kinds of things and those kinds of men that are calibrated, that are being leaders, are actually moving away from sort of traditional Christianity, sort of the church. So that's what I, that, that's, I don't know, that's kind of a thought. It's not really a question, but I wonder if that's something you've thought about where you're running into these kind of guys that are sort of fitting the bill, but they may not be fitting the Christianity bill, but the guys that are fitting your Christianity bill aren't fitting the rest of it. Mm -hmm. And if you get to a point where it's, you know, either or kind of, kind of what's it going to be? I, well, I'm open to being with somebody that would be willing to learn more about my faith and, or, and at least just be supportive of that. But I, I, I really, just cannot see myself with somebody that is just doesn't that's an atheist like just straight up doesn't believe at all um i just don't think i i really don't think i could do that and i'm not gonna i i know that it's a small pool but it's also not impossible um so i i'm gonna be hopeful in that sense so it's easier for you preferable for you to take an unplugged guy and sort of bring him to the light versus take a Christian guy and try to teach him all this, all this stuff. If you had yeah, to choose between not the two. Something, yeah, no, this is, it's not my responsibility to teach a man those things. He should, he should have outlets that teach him those things and, and, and know those things. So, so I, women I really, just want guys to get it. Just get it. I don't want to figure it out, figure it out for you. Yeah. Like, it's just like you, it's, you get it or, or you don't. It's mm. that, that, and you, I can tell that very early on, whatever, I start um, talking to a guy before I meet him or something like I, you can tell. Yeah. There's um, there's a side conversation going on here in the live chat. This guy, Christianity Unplugged said most church ladies I run away from. So I asked him why in the chat while you guys were discussing that. And he responded with um, they tend to be sluts and pretend holiness, single mom issues, fake feminine egals or complementarian problems end up emasculating men. I think that's one of the, grievances a lot of guys have expressed that I've heard anyway um, is that there's you know a lot of gals that are in the church but they don't subscribe to the rule book you know for example um, in most you know religions up until marriage it's expected the women you know to be chaste you know to be virgins you know on their wedding day um, and that's kind of gone out the window you know in almost all scenarios but the 
other things that they talk about as well, like they emasculate men, they run guys. Like a lot of the churches are are encouraging women to become more masculine, sort of thing. So I think there's a lot of a lot of guys out there that are feeling um, a distance from their faiths that they might have grown up in or might have subscribed to it at some point. Not really. Like I don't know if you guys want to comment on that, but it's just an observation that I've uh, seen. Well, I think. I'm not- more society than churches i think i feel like society is yeah i agree what do you mean uh, (laughs) society versus churches like i I feel like that's just society in general is pushing women to be more of that masculine role you know rather like i i'm not saying that you know that person churches you know the women in those churches it's they are just it's not the churches that are doing it right. it is more of it's culture it, yeah so yeah. but but i mean like you can see the grievances that they might have with that because because if religion and uh, church and faith says something simple like you know you, you must re- remain chaste to your wedding day you know for your husband but society and culture and media and hollywood <laughs> and music is like indulge go out have fun act like a man you know share yourself with a whole bunch of dudes you can see why there's you know these conflicts that exist and why guys start to walk away from religion and faith too right i mean yeah absolutely the the devil's going to lead you to you know the hiding fun type of lifestyle you mm. know rather than a but don't women have agency like don't they have the ability to make decisions for themselves and follow you know the rule book yeah but they don't i mean yeah that's what being human is like we're not you know we're not perfect i really hope you guys enjoyed that clip if you want to watch the full length podcast you can find that over here that clips from if you're newer to the channel make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment you'll find a bunch of useful links to my website my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff have an amazing day peace out